Hello friends, this video on thermodynamics part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 22. So let's let's do some experiments. Let's do some experiments to see what is the force that derives a chemical reaction. So if you see the water falls down the hill, right? And we see there is a change in potential energy. If lower the potential energy, it becomes more stable. If you see the heat flows from hot body to cold body, it becomes cold, the coffee becomes cold. Why? Because it's hot, the atmosphere is cold, the heat flows and it becomes hot, cold. So the heat flows because they want to maintain the equilibrium. The wood wants to lower the energy because it lowers the energy if you uh, burn the wood. So from these we can see that for exothermic reaction where delta H is negative, it has to be spontaneous from these, at least from these observations. We can say that, but I don't think we are correct. We should wait, but let, let's see some more reactions. If you see N2 plus O2, it gives NO2 and it is a endothermic reaction. It's an endothermic reaction. Also, if you see the carbon, when you mix with sulfur, it gives CS2. That is also endothermic reaction, but this happens on its own. So, we are confused, right? So, we have some spontaneous reactions which are exothermic, some reactions which are endothermic. So, decrease in enthalpy may be a factor, but it is not true for all case. So, we can't determine from the enthalpy change whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. Right? Because we have seen some reactions just in front of your screen, we have some reactions which are in uh, endo, endothermic, some are exothermic, that is, for some the delta H is negative, for some delta H is positive, but all of these reactions we are talking about are spontaneous reactions. So, delta H is something which is not helping us here, and that's what we discussed the limitation of the first law because it doesn't tell whether the reaction is spontaneous or not. So, what should we do? We are helpless now. We don't have an answer. The delta H which we have learned uh, so far, so religiously, is not helping us. So let's try a new friend, entropy. Entropy will help us to find the spontaneity of a reaction. So before we even de define the entropy, or let's uh, set a uh, stage for our new friend to come, the entropy to come. So let's take a reaction where the delta H is zero so that we have minimum calculations and we don't have to think much. It is neither positive nor negative. The delta H is zero, there is no enthalpy change. Let's just take two diffusion of two gas in a closed container. So I have two different gas, the container is closed and they are separated by a partition. The one on the left is the green gas, the one on the right is the blue gas. Now if I remove the partition, what will happen is if you see the gas molecules will move and it will become random. If you see now, now we have green and blue particles all around this box, right? The randomness has increased, has increased. So my new friend entropy will focus on this part, the randomness in the system, right? So if you, how things become more cluttered, and it's all the macroscopic level. Please don't on the macro level. If I have two rooms, one room is dirty, one room is clean, I can't say that the dirtier room has more entropy. We are talking about the uh, macroscopic level, at least you, you take three or four or ten, ten, twenty molecules together, right? Or not at a very high level. I really know macroscopic level because we are looking at the molecules. The randomness of molecules. Randomness of So, as I told, the entropy is at the molecular level. So, let's introduce the new thermodynamics function into the entropy and that is denoted by S. So, I have a new friend entropy, I will denote this entropy by S. And if you define entropy, nothing but it is a measure of degree of randomness or disorder in a system. 
In the chemical reaction, if you see entropy change can be a rearrangement of atoms or ions from one part into another. For the example I showed in the last slide where I had one gas uh, box with two gas printed by a chamber and then I removed that partition and uh, they rearrange itself. Or in the structure, and if you see the structure of the product is much shorter. In the reactant we say that the entropy has increased, that means the, react, the, the product is more disordered than the reactant, we say entropy has increased. And if the product is uh, not that much disordered, it is, uh, it is uh, ordered, and then we say the entropy has decreased. That generally happens, hardly happens. And if you see, if you see the crystalline solids, they have the lowest entropy and they are most solid. So all these solid states, they have less entropy because the molecules, they have less space to move actually. They are ordered. The gaseous state has the highest entropy because the intermolecular uh, force is less, they keep moving on here and there. And the liquid is the intermediate one. If you see, uh, they have little space, but yeah, still they have some fraction. So they are they have entropy, but the gas has more maximum entropy, thus medium and the solid ones has a minimum entropy. Right? If you increase the temperature, volume, or amount of substance, the entropy increases. If you heat it up, it will become heat, hot, uh, hot and the molecules will move more random, the entropy will increase. Increase the volume, the entropy will increase. Increase the amount of sustain, the entropy will increase because the molecule will give more space to move around here and there. And please, please note that entropy is also a state function. It depends only on the state, it's not the path function, it doesn't care the path which came from the state function. Now I told entropy. Entropy is the measure of randomness. But how will you quantify entropy? How will you measure the randomness? Okay. So one good option is you calculate the disorder or the chaotic distribution of the energy among all the molecules. You see one, let's suppose one um, small block of substance and then you do all this. So uh, you use a big high class microscope and try to see the randomness, the speed of all the molecules. With that you can find the entropy. But that would be very difficult, I believe, because even 1 gram or 10 gram of substance will have a huge number of molecules. It would be very difficult to observe them, note the values, very, very difficult, almost impossible task. The other word is relate this entropy with the heat evolved. So, till now we have learned the heat evolved, how can we can find the heat evolved from the system, right? Constant pressure, constant volume, we have learned all those things. So, what if we can leverage those knowledge and the knowledge to find the entropy. So if we can somehow relate my new friend S to the heat, we can easily understand the entropy. Right? And why I'm saying this because we already know how to find the heat transfer, or heat uh, uh, that is Q. We already know how to find that. So we can somehow relate it with entropy. Uh, we can save a lot of time. So let's try to uh, relate entropy with the heat. So experimentally we have seen that whenever a heat is added to a system, for example I have a beaker in water and I heat this, I heat this, the molecules become more random because it, 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 the kinetic energy of the molecules increase and they move here and there. Right? So if I have a system and if I provide heat, the randomness increase. That means that means the entropy is directly proportional to temperature. You can say, right? That means I can say that the heat, the Q, not temperature, talking about the heat now. The heat transfer has the randomizing influence. You transfer more heat, you become more. Correct. So can we say that delta S? is almost equal to delta S is directly proportional to Q. Can you say? Yes, we can, right? Because uh, my entropy is uh, linked with Q. The more heat transfer, I mean, you transfer more heat, it becomes more uh, random. Experience also suggests, based on the experiments the scientists have done that, the distribution of heat also depends on the temperature at which the heat is added. That means, system with the higher temperature has higher and greater randomness in it 
than one at the lower dimension. See, if I have two beakers, same substance, this guy is, let's suppose, 10 degrees Celsius, and this guy is 80 degrees Celsius, this 80 degrees Celsius beaker B will be having more entropy. It will be more random. The, the randomness of the molecule will be more in 80 degrees Celsius. Right? So, at the temperature, we can find the average uh, chaotic uh, motion of the particle, particles in the system. But, please pay attention here. Heat added to a system at the lower temperature causes greater randomness than the same heat added to a high temperature. See, it is saying that, that this is fine. This is pretty easy actually to understand that if my system is at high temperature, it will have more random molecules, low temperature, low molecules. But if let's suppose in both the case, you add same amount of heat, heat supplied is same. In this case, the delta S, the, the new, the change in entropy will be more. In this case, the delta S will be less. It will not decrease, but it will be less. This will be delta S, will be delta big S, right? And here it will be small delta S. Why? This is experimentally, they have seen that it is as good as saying that if a country is already very rich, or if you give, if you give a rich person 100 rupee, it won't matter to him, right? But if you give a poor person 100 rupee, it will matter to him a lot, right? He'll become more random, he'll start moving, he'll start dancing and all, but he got 100 rupee. The rich guy will not be that much bothered. Or let, let's try, let's uh, uh, say entropy, let's say that entropy is happiness. Let's say. Entropy is happiness, right? So a rich guy, I'm just, Maybe more happy. I'm just talking about the financial perspective. Maybe he is not happy. A rich guy will be more happy, and poor guy will be less happy. If you if you say that happiness is directly proportional to money, but if the rich guy, if you give ten, if you give hundred rupees, a hundred dollar, that person won't be that. I mean, the change in happiness won't be that much. But if you give a poor person hundred rupee, hundred dollar. The change in happiness is more, he'll be very happy, right? For him with $100, 100 rupees is a very, very big amount. So here also, if a system is at lower temperature and the other system is higher temperature, if you supply the same heat, system with a lower temperature, the change in entropy will be more as compared to system with a higher temperature. Similar phenomenon which we have in real life, right? Or you can equate with the, uh, the marks also. Let's suppose Max is uh, your entropy, and uh, if a, so if a topper gets 10 marks extra, uh, he'll not get happy. But uh, if a person who's getting less marks, I mean, the weak student gets 10 marks extra, he'll be very, very, very happy. For him, 10 marks mean a lot. So that way, you can say that uh, I'm just trying to give some examples to make this thing more clear to you. Change in entropy, change in entropy is. Inversely proportional temperature. If it is at low temperature, change in entropy is more. Right? So if you see, the formula we got from the relation was, the experiment was that a change in entropy is Q by T. But here, one thing, uh, and when the system is at equilibrium, delta S is zero. Change in entropy is zero. But thing I'm, I want you guys to note is that the entropy is proportional to T, but change in entropy is inversely proportional to T. As I told, System with higher temperature will have higher entropy, but if there are two systems, uh, one with higher temperature, one with lower temperature, the change in entropy will be inversely proportional to T because this system has lower temperature here, the change in entropy is more. This system has higher temperature here, the change in entropy is less. Right? And here are some facts. The change in entropy for the equilibrium is zero, is a known fact. Uh, why? Because there is no more entropy change and it's an equilibrium. And this is a very critical formula. The change in entropy is nothing but Q by T and that's what our goal was to somehow relate the entropy with heat because heat is something which we know. Heat supply is something which we know how to find with the specific heat capacity, heat capacity, there's so many ways to find it. So if we know this, 
if you know the temperature, we can find the change in it. Let's compare one funny difference between delta u and delta s behavior. So if you see, uh, delta u will be zero for isothermal process. We have learned this for both reversible and re irreversible. That means delta u doesn't differentiate between reversible and irreversible process. And change in internal energy is not, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's a reversible process or irreversible process. But the entropy, for entropy it matters. For irreversible process, the change in entropy is always greater than zero and that's what the uh, law we have second law of thermodynamics okay so the the very funny thing actually it says that the delta s differentiate the change in entropy differentiate in the reversible and irreversible process but the uh, internal energy does not make a difference between this and the change in entropy is always positive it takes an example to show that uh, entropy thank you visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.